This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Jesus House Barriga, his abiding place. We are situated at number 30 Asani Street, close to Elijah Bus Stop, Barriga, Lagos State, Nigeria. You are welcome to join any of our services Tuesday, Digging Deep by 6 30 pm, Thursday, Faith Clinic, also by 6 30 pm, and on Sunday by 7 30 am or 9 am. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on all our social media accounts on Facebook. RCCG Jesus House Barriga on Instagram at RCCG Jesus House Barriga. Come expectant and you'll be sure to share a testimony. Lord. Hallelujah. We are all welcome to today's faith clinic. I pray that as you have gathered here today that God would meet with us right there wherever we are in Jesus name. Amen. Praise the Lord. The theme for today's faith clinic is no more wasted grace. No more wasted grace. I want us to take this worship song together. Who is like unto thee Oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh Lord, amongst the gods, who is like thee? Glorious in holiness and faithful in praises, always doing wonders. Hallelujah, always doing wonders. Hallelujah. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we commence this service in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Father, even as we've gathered here, we pray that your presence will abide with us. And every prayer that we pray today will be sealed even in your blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Once again, we're all welcome. Our topic for today is no more wasted grace. No more wasted grace. We'll be looking at our Bible. We'll be looking at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. It says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Let's also look at the book of let's also look at the book of Titus 2, verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men as appeared to all men i see the grace of god is god's gift to mankind some people have tried to describe it they describe it as unmerited favor undeserving blessings and of the truth they are correct now it's important to know that the grace of god is the totality of god's investment in our lives the totality of everything that god has deposited in us be it our gifts our talent our anointing power even relationships, everything that God has de deposited into our lives to make us better, to give us an edge, it's God's grace upon our life. However, there's an error that man falls into from time to time, especially when it's given this, it's given things, either common things, expensive things, precious things on the platter of gold. This error is the error of abuse or the error of wastage. The book of 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1, 2 Corinthians 6 verse 1 says, We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. It is possible to receive the grace of God in vain. It's possible to waste it. To receive the grace of God in vain is to waste it, to leave it idle, to refuse to use it, to refuse to profit with it, to reject it, to use it partially, or to use it as an as an excuse for sin, as an excuse to remain in sin and lounge in sin. Now, tonight we'll be praying against every form of wastage. We'll be praying against every form of, every act that, 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 that represents wasting the grace of God upon our lives, either voluntarily or involuntarily, knowingly or knowingly. 
But before we go on, I'd like us to look at one of the eminent dangers of wasting the grace of, of God upon our lives. If you look at Luke 3, Luke chapter 3, verse 9, the book of Luke chapter 3, verse 9, I'd like to read from the New American Standard Bible. It says, Indeed, the axe is already laid at the root of the trees. So every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. You see, when the God Almighty designed you and I, he deposited all that we need, all that we need to excel. He went further to give us grace. And to this grace, he had to time after time. Now, all of these things that he does for us is not for nothing. It's not for nothing. You see, God regards all of this as his investment in us. And God is not a foolish investor. The aim of God's investment in your life is for maximum profitability, that you will profit thereby maximally. Now, at any point in time that you refuse to profit maximally, it's at this point that God begins to cut such a one down or even throw such a person into fire. Tonight, we are going to pray. We're going to pray. With all this understanding in mind, we're going to pray. The first prayer we're going to take today is to say, Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace upon my life. Thank you for your grace upon my life. The book of Titus 2.11, Titus 2.11 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Let's say, Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace upon my life, upon my family, upon my friends, upon my loved ones. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your grace. Unto your name be glory. Unto your name be honor. Unto your name be adoration. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Secondly, we're going to pray. We're going to say, Father, forgive me for wasting your grace upon my life in any way. In any way, I've wasted your grace upon my life. Whether knowing you or knowingly, Father, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Have mercy on me, Lord. Whether I, have no, whether I did it intentionally or unintentionally, Father, forgive me for wasting your grace upon my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Now we're going to say, Father, Forgive me for constantly remaining in sin. Forgive me for constantly remaining in sin, despite your grace upon my life. For constantly remaining in a sinful life, despite your grace upon my life. Father, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. I hope that we are praying. I hope that we are talking to God. Say, Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. The book of, Sec of Romans, the book of Romans 6, 1 says that, is it shall we continue in sin and say grace to our bad? He says, God forbid. God forbid. Let's say, Father, have mercy. Anyway, I've remained in sin. That's what your investment, your grace upon my life. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to also pray again. We're going to pray again. But before we pray, let's look at the book of Jude 1 verse 4. The book of Jude 1 verse 4. Now, I'd like to read from the contemporary English version. It says, Some godless people are sneaked in amongst us and are saying, God treats us much better than we deserve. And so, it's all right to be immoral. They even deny you must obey Jesus Christ as your only master and Lord. But long ago, the scriptures warned that these godless people were doomed. We're going to pray tonight. We're going to say, Father, in any way I've turned your grace upon my life into an excuse to remain in sin. In any way I've turned your grace upon my life into an excuse to remain in sin. Or even to work in error. Please forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. You see some people, they'll be talking to those people saying, oh, there's so much grace upon my life. Yet they are messing up. They are doing things that they are not supposed to. Say, Father, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. In any way, I've turned your grace upon my life into an excuse to remain in sin. Baba, have mercy. Or an excuse to work in error. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we've prayed. Amen. We're going to pray again. We're going to pray again. We're going to say, Father, in any way I've frustrated your grace upon my life. Father, today I repent. This hour I repent. In any way I've frustrated your grace upon my life. Father, I repent of it. In the name of Jesus, forgive me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus. The book of Galatians 2, 21 says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if, I, if righteousness comes by law, then Christ is dead in vain. Then Christ is dead in vain. Let's say, Father, Lord, in any way I frustrated your grace upon my life, Lord, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Father, have mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus, forgive me. Have mercy upon me. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. I hope that we are praying. I hope that we are praying. Again, we are going to say, Father, 
wherever I've rejected your grace through pride, I repent right now. I repent right now. See, it's possible to reject the grace of God upon um, the grace of God for you by being proud. The book of James 4, verse 6b says that wherefore he said, God resists the proud, he resists the proud, but give it grace unto the humble. But when he say, Father, in any way I've rejected your grace upon my life through pride, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name of pray. Amen. Amen. Also, we're going to say, Father, I repent of every act of unprofitability over the years. Over the years. I want you to look into your life. I want you to check your life. Say, Father, I repent of every act of unprofitability over the years. In the name of Jesus. I repent of every act of unprofitability. In the name of Jesus. Whether idleness, whatever it might be, procrastination, whatever it might be, laziness, whatever it might be. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus, mighty and wonderful name of prayer. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name, we pray. Now we're going to say, we're going to say, Father, Father, peradventure I've fallen from grace. Peradventure I've fallen from grace. Please forgive me today. Forgive me tonight, Lord, and mercifully restore me. And mercifully restore me. It is possible to fall from grace. It's possible to fall from grace. Galatians 1, verse 6 says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from he who called you. <laughs> who called you? In the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Galatians 5 verse 4 also says, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Wherefore you are justified by the law. You are fallen from grace. Say, Father, peradventure are falling from grace. Peradventure are falling from grace. Please forgive me tonight. Forgive me tonight. Mercifully restore me. Mercifully restore me. You know, like that illustration we use a lot of time when, um, when probably the battery is low and the, and the clock is still ticking. <laughs> it's possible that you're falling from grace and you're still, you're still working so actively and you don't even know. Say, Father, peradventure of falling from grace, mercifully restore me. Have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name of prayer. When Jesus might have a wonderful name of prayer, I want us to be encouraged. I want us to pray. I want us to pray this night. I want us to be encouraged. Now, did you know that refusal to align to God's perfect will for your life, refusal to work in God's perfect will for your life, is tantamount to wasting His grace? <laughs> yes, so it's tantamount to wasting His grace upon your life. So now you're going to say, Father, from now on, from now on, I begin to yield. I begin to align my life to your perfect purpose for my life in the name of Jesus. From now on, I begin to yield. I begin to align my life to your perfect purpose for my life in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I begin to yield to you. I begin to align my life, oh God, to your perfect, to your perfect purpose for my life in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name of prayer. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name of prayer. Now, do you also know that one of the most common reasons why a lot of people waste the grace of God upon their life is because they do not have faith. It's because a lot of them don't even know, they don't even believe, they don't accept, they don't recognize the fact that God has sufficiently graced them. You see some people, when you when you hear members or brethren around them saying, oh, there's so much grace upon the sister's life, they feel so down and be like, ah, I don't have anything. There's so much grace upon this brother's life. They be like, ah, it looks like I don't have anything. See, it takes the grace of God for you to acknowledge that there's so much grace upon your life. Sufficient grace. It takes the grace of God for you to receive it. It takes faith for you to receive it. It takes faith for you to acknowledge it. It even takes faith for you to begin to walk in that power, in that authority. Tonight, you are going to pray. You are going to say, Father, I receive faith. I receive faith to fully exercise the authority of your grace upon my life. I receive faith tonight to fully exercise the authority of your grace upon my life in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No longer will I work in ignorance. No longer will I work in unbelief that you've sufficiently graced me in the name of Jesus. I receive faith. The faith I need, oh God, to work fully in the authority of the grace of God upon my life. I receive it today. I receive it this hour in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus, mighty and wonderful name of prayer. For in Jesus, mighty and wonderful name of prayer. I hope that we are praying. I hope that we are praying. I hope that we are praying. You say, Father, say, Father, from now on, I begin to fully maximize every of your grace upon my life. In the name of Jesus. You're not, 
it's no, it's, there's no more time for you to be partially, partially using the grace of God upon your life. Say, Father, from now on, I begin to maximally, maximally use all your grace upon my life in the name of Jesus. All your grace in every spare, every aspect of my life in the name of Jesus. I begin to maximally use it. I begin to maximally use it in the name of Jesus. I begin to use it maximally. And you begin to use it, oh God, in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Finally, Finally, we're going to take our last prayer point. But before we do, I want us to read the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. I want us to read the book of 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace which was with me. This was Apostle Paul talking. You see, if you look at the life of this man, the man was so blessed, he was so graced. But if you look at his life, one of the things you will learn is that despite the assorted, the assorted, the, 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 the various kind of grace that there is upon the life of a man, there's still a very huge space, a very huge need to work hard. A very huge need to walk, to labor diligently. So tonight we are going to pray. We are going to say, Father, grant me the grace I need to walk most diligently. To finish the work with which you have called me in the name of Jesus. Father, grant me grace to walk most diligently. To finish the work you have called me to do in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to work. I receive grace to finish it. I receive grace to finish it excellently in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to fulfill your purpose upon my life. I, I receive grace to God today to finish the work which you've called me, oh God, excellently in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name of pray. I want to begin to thank God. I want to begin to thank him because everything we've said in his yes this night is heard us. It's heard us because we, I know that we've prayed the prayers and faith. And it's going to answer us. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we've prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you once again for joining us, joining us in today's prayers. Thank you very much. God bless you. Now, um... You see some numbers displayed on the screen. It's time for us to drop our offerings. You could do your transfers. The account details are, have been displayed on the screen. I want you to send in your offering. Remember that it's not good to enter into the presence of God empty-handed. It's not a good thing. I want you to send in your offering. And I know that God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that even as every, each and every one of us send in our offering, Father, we pray that you bless it. You bless it in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name we pray. Amen. We've come to the end of this wonderful service. We've come to the end of this wonderful service. I'd like you to share the grace with me. The grace and fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Thank you once again. See you again in our next service. Amen. Praise God.